He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Those may be the strongest verses in the Bible about Jesus Christ, all things. What a great theme for this Colossians study. And what a great assignment today for me. I'm Newt, and I've been here before, and it's good to meet you if you haven't been here. The only rule is uh, check it out with Scripture and see this great passage to prepare us for communion, how strong it is. Colossians, we're in the book of Colossians, all things is the theme and it's Christ who is in charge of all things. It's, uh, we have an, a long assignment. I'm going to major on two verses here at Chapel Street, and thanks for the privilege to be with you again. These are the ABCs in some ways. We've just sung about the ABCs. No guilt in life is the last verse which will lead us into communion. No guilt in life. No fear in death. Whoa. Because of Christ. So we're going to start with the ABCs as they show up, and the ABCs to me are who is God and how do you get connected with God? And Paul addresses those, and we'll look at them briefly in this uh, Colossian letter as he talks about our lives and how we can live. I hope this is something you're going to think about or just give thanks for in combination with Jesus Christ. Christianity is, it it, it is not, okay, I'll do it. Billy Graham said, come forward, I'm coming forward. No, no. My grandma said, raise your hand or believe. No, no, it's in Christ who is all things, owns all things, and is our righteousness. You've heard already, I'm not the first speaker on Colossians, how they added all kinds of spooky stuff all kinds of rules and laws for our lives. And uh, it's Paul who's correcting these, as was his custom, and we're going to look at it. Here we go. If you have a Bible or a phone with you or an email uh, that you want to read first, go ahead, but then turn in your Bible. (laughs) Here we go in Colossians uh, chapter 1, verse 24. And I'm going to read quickly some verses to major on my assigned verses. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, Paul's writing, from prison, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is the church. Christ suffered, Paul suffers. 25, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known The mystery, verse 26, our theme for a moment, the the mystery hidden for ages and generations to come, but now revealed to his saints, to his believers. To them, 27, God chose to make known the riches of the glory of this mystery. Here's the mystery defined, which is Christ in you. The mystery to the Colossians was, Okay, even the Christians, believe in Jesus, he died on the cross, he rose again, and guess what? Don't you dare eat that meat. Don't you dare break that holiday. Don't you dare skip that Sabbath. And they added all these rules. And he starts right off by saying the mystery of salvation said simply, I hope you could define this to your neighbor, it is Christ in you. The hope of glory and the assurance of glory. So the first mystery, and by the way, the mystery in the Bible is not Halloween stuff. A lot of you went out trick-or-treating, probably. Uh, The mystery is not a spooky thing or a, a James Bond kind of mystery or some detective. It is something that was cloudy before, not clear, kids, it was something that 
people would come up with, you know what I think? They'd be talk shows back in those days. You know what I think? You know what I think salvation is? It's when you, Paul said, the mystery has been revealed. It is Christ in you. So that's a mystery we want to embrace. In chapter 2, he gives, it seems out of order, but look at the second mystery. I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not seen me face to face, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, to reach, to teach all the riches of full assurance of understanding. You guys... We should have the full riches of understanding. We should say, absolutely, no fear in death. No guilt in life. Why? He says, to the riches of the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ. The second mystery that he gives right here is, what is the mystery of God? You've stood around the water cooler or at Starbucks or another coffee shop. I shouldn't say the name. You're supposed to give equal time. Starbucks, I can't even think of the others. And you've heard people say, well, to me, my neighbor said, to me, my daddy said God would never judge sin or hurt people. Where did your daddy get that, I asked. He said, I don't know. There are all kinds of theories, and here Paul says, The mystery has been solved, and the mystery is, what is God like? Who is God? What does he look like? Where is he? The mystery of God is Christ. Any questions? Paul is so clear here. Again, a mystery in the Bible, kept covered over like it had a dark sheet over top it. And in the Old Testament, they'd say, I wonder... Uh, Job said, if a man die, will he live again? I I think I'll see my Redeemer someday. Embracing the greatest mysteries, I hope this is true. Salvation mystery is you in Christ, Christ in you. And the mystery of God, this is a huge statement. And we've all heard all kinds, well, I, I think, I think God is the God of every faith and every belief The ABC is here. Here it is. Salvation is Christ in your life, in your heart. Who is God? Jesus Christ. He said, John 14, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Whoa. Nothing is clearer in the Bible than that. The words that he spoke and the things that he did were exactly God. If this isn't God, you've seen it as a theme. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. By him, all things were created in heaven and earth, visible and invisible, everything. All things were created through him and for him. Whoa. Do you believe that? I think you do. It's probably one of the big reasons you came here. It is all about the Lord Jesus Christ. Embrace the great mystery. By the way, just because I like to teach, there are six or seven other mysteries in the Bible. There's the mystery of evil, which I won't look at. But here's uh, how Jesus Christ honored the mystery of God is Christ. The mystery of salvation is Christ in you. In Ephesians, it says, I show you the mystery of how the Old Testament and the New will come together in Jesus Christ. The mystery of the resurrection, that's in 1 Corinthians 15. Behold, I show you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. And I won't say it today because my friends think it's corny, but in our nursery where I grew up, there was a sign on the wall in the nursery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. If you're taking notes, write it down. (laughs) And then the mystery of the end. That's also in Ephesians. It says, how's it all going to end? Nobody knew in the Old Testament. How it's all, some people don't know today. They think it's going to be related to alien. The mystery is Christ will return and bring all things into subjection. So you know this. The constant theme of the mysteries is like everything else at church, 
Jesus. I don't know if you believe that, but you ought to move closer today or just affirm it when you take communion and say, yep, he's, he's all things. Verse 6 of chapter 2. Ask to major on these, I'm delighted. Therefore, verse 6, since you know the mysteries, as you receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. Rooted. That's past tense. Rooted. That's done. It's, it's there. <laughs> when you put your faith in Jesus Christ as Savior, you were rooted. God did it even if you didn't feel it. You stuck your life down deep into Jesus Christ and said, He's the Lord, the Savior. He is now my Lord and my Savior. So that's past tense. It's, it's very important. Then the challenge, rooted and progressive, present tense, build up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. But the start is, just as you received Christ. Have you received Christ? It's not automatic. Doesn't happen because you were born in the Chapel Street nursery. Doesn't happen because your Christians were believers and followers. In the Old Testament, you have these promises. Starting in Genesis chapter 3, there's a baby coming, the seed of a woman. This baby will crush the head of the snake. And Adam and Eve said, huh? But then you have all these revelations about a Messiah to come, the Lord Jesus Christ, we find out now. But they just said, out of Judah, a prince. Uh, and, it, and finally, he's going to be born in Bethlehem, and he's Jesus. And John wrote, after about the word became flesh, in that same context writes, as many as received him. So, you could see him and see his miracles and just go, uh-uh, I'm not changing my life or my focus. But as many as received him, John said, here Paul says, as you have received him, it has to start there. Everyone is not a Christian. To receive, look what he says in verse 6, it's so strong. As you have see, received Christ Jesus the Lord. Christ, the anointed Messiah, the fulfillment of all the Old Testament. This is a mouthful. This is like saying mayor somebody or president somebody. I'm not going to say names because everybody will start taking sides. Christ Jesus the Lord. Christ means Messiah. This is the anointed one. Jesus, the historical human being. You could touch him and see him. The Lord. That means sovereign Lord over all the universe. That's who we receive when we receive Christ. Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. Jesus, the historical figure, the real person who still has a body, lives in heaven, will come back. The Lord, who solves all the mysteries of life. Do you believe in him? In who? Jesus? Oh, yeah. No, Christ, Jesus, the Lord. Fulfillment of all the Old Testament. Lived here on earth. Died on the cross. Rose again to show that he was Lord and that we could have no fear in life or in death. When you believe in him, you believe that all your sins were on his back. And when you put your faith in him as Savior today, or whenever it was, then his death counts for you. Otherwise, you die for your own sins. When you believe in him, the Bible says in Romans, it's the whole theme, his righteousness now covers you. So your sins are judged, your righteousness is a gift. That is nothing about earning salvation or adding rules. We received him. It is not nebulous. As a historical person, 
It's the Lord of all creation. It's the Lord of life and death. And we become complete spiritually when we are in Christ. Is that you? As you have received him, then he says, you are now rooted. You trust him and what he did on the cross. This is a big part of the central part of your life, your heart. When you pray in Jesus' name, you know what it means. I come to you through him. Then he says, here's your strength. And he gives these three phrases. Four, if you count rooted. You're rooted, that's past tense. The moment, we're going to celebrate it in communion. The moment you, you were in Christ, you were rooted. We live next to the sand dunes, and there's a lot of overturned trees at times, or you, the roots are sticking out because the sand blew away. You should see all the roots. You know that. They go way down. That's who we are. That's what we have when we are in Christ. We are rooted. Stop worrying if you're truly in Christ. But then, three things. Live in combination. Build up. That's progressive. That's present. You keep being built up in the faith. Established. Keep being strengthened. Think, think muscle. Think the more you forgive and the more you love others, the more you're strengthened. And then, give thanks. This is not about Thursday coming up. This is about a life of thanksgiving. It's like some of you are married. I always say, you know who you are. You should. Once you're married, the roots are down. It's legal. You're there. You're his wife. You're her husband. Some people are married, and that's about it. They have a piece of paper. Some people are Christians, count me in, and that's about it. They have some assurance. He says, you are rooted, but in your marriage, the parallel would be now grow, get to know each other, love each other, be kind, come on, forgive. What are you doing, God would say to some of us. You're a Christian, okay, but now keep building up the faith. No more. Study the Bible. The faith is, is, is content. It's, it's in the Bible. And, and get stronger. How do you get stronger? You lift weights. You try different things. You forgive somebody. You love somebody who's no fun. You keep going and always abounding in thanksgiving. I coach churches, and so I'm in a different church almost every Sunday, and one time, not too long ago, I was up in a church in Canada, and met with the board all day Saturday, and the staff, part of that Sunday services, they had an evening service, spoke there, and then we were, I was sitting in the pastor's home, his name's Kevin, true story. I'll always tell you when I'm lying. And uh, we were in a little condo, actually not very big at all, and there was a gorgeous piano just like this in the middle of the, of the living room. We were sitting having a ham and cheese sandwich. Had mustard on mine, if you're taking notes. Uh, <laughs> and I saw the piano, and I said to the wife, Gert, I said, Gert, do you play the piano? And she said, no. She said, do you? And I said, well, yeah, a little. I, I, I took lessons and I was good when I was 12, and from 13 on I got bad. <laughs> Tried other things. She said, well, play something for us. You know how you do. And I said, oh, no. She said, no, play something. So I'm, I'm a guest, and I went over to the piano. I said, and I do play by ear now. I said, well, tell me your favorite hymn. And she said, oh, worship the king. So I played that through the whole way. She said, do you know anything classical? I said, well, our, our daughter is Elise. I can play for Elise. That's a true song, if you're not as classical as I am. She said, well, play it. So I go. And I quit, and she said, keep going. 
She said, keep going. I said, that's all I know. <laughs> I went back and we had lemon meringue pie for dessert. If you're taking notes, lemon was about that thick, meringue. And then it struck me, Newt, that's what I call myself, Newt asked Kevin, Kevin, I said, do you play the piano? He said, yeah. I said, will you play something? I'm not exaggerating. He went over to the piano and for a half hour played the most gorgeous jazz I have ever heard in my life. And I like jazz. He played every note. All the black notes, all the white notes. I played key of F. Some of you know that's one flat. I'm sorry, pianist. And I just sat, I pulled a chair over and sat and he said, name, name a show tune, I'll play it. And I, I know things Bev Shea sang and Pat Boone, and I tried to think, what's a show tune? Anyway, I named a couple songs, and he played them just like that. It was gorgeous, and then we went back to the table, and I said, Kevin, what if I never would have asked you? All you would have heard was my flimsy, oh, worship the king, and four measures of fur Elise, what if you never asked Christ to help you grow stronger, to be rooted, to be, to be stronger in your faith, to be abounding in thanksgiving? He can help you. He always gave thanks. Don't go through life as a believer. Count me in. Okay. But instead, what he's saying here is keep going. Root it. Build up. And live in the freedom. Look what he follows this with. Verse 8. See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy or empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world. Huh? And not according to Christ. You've heard the Colossians were adding all kinds of rules about wine, about days, about holidays, about you better do this or you're not really in with Christ. He said, don't live in that captivity. This was Reformation uh, week, all week also, all saints days. Uh, we celebrate sola grace, only grace. That was a big turn for the church. Martin Luther led it. Only grace. Don't add all those rules. When I was little, we had all kinds of rules in our fundamentalist church. Our joke was we don't smoke or chew or date the girls that do. The, si the serious part was if you're in a movie when Jesus comes, you won't go to heaven. Huh? King Kong wasn't that good. I would have forfeited heaven for seeing King Kong. We added all those rules, the ways you dress, the perfect attendance. And the rules make us have trophies and start thinking, God, you made a good pick when you picked me. And Paul says here, don't do that. The Colossians added all these rules, and they had the Christians flabbergasted. Are you sure we have to do that? Yes. Are you really a believer? Then you'll dress like this. Then you'll... And, 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 and Paul says, come on. You're rooted in him. Now keep being built up, but also be free in the proper sense, in the true freedom of Jesus Christ. Is that the way that you live? If it is, it will be the way that you die. It will be the way that you love others free from having to get even, free from always having to be in charge. And look how he follows this, verse 9. Not according to Christ. Uh, we've all heard the phrase, I think, quid quo pro. I won't get into it. But it means this for that. And that's the way a lot of people think God is. You do this, he'll do this for you. Come on. Paul says, live in the freedom. He does it all. And now he defines, verse 9, for in Christ the full fullness of deity dwells bodily. 
And you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. In Jesus Christ, fullness of God. When you believe in Jesus Christ and Christ lives in you, you are full. You can't add to that. Whoa. Look at verse 10. And you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands. It wasn't just the physical act. It's a spiritual thing by Christ putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Not only that, you were buried with him in baptism. Baptism is a symbol that you died in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God who raised him from the dead. In God's eyes, you're already raised from the dead. In Colossians 3, I think in two weeks, you'll see, since you have been raised with Christ, seek those things that are above. In God's eyes, you're already in heaven. It's that sure. Oh. He's saying, live in freedom. All this is true. And you, 13, who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, your sinful nature, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses. Watch this, 14. By canceling the record of debts that stood against us with its legal demands, this he set aside, nailing it to the cross. Kids, think about it. When Jesus died on the cross, it's like everything you've ever done, everything I've ever done. I've lied. I've, I've, I've been guilty of so many sins. So have we all. He nailed them to the cross. The time Newt tricked his brother that way and didn't admit it. Nailed to the cross. The lust of our flesh, the pride of our eyes. He nailed it to the cross. When a person died on the cross, they often put a paper above him. For Jesus, they put, he said he was king of the Jews. Murderer, thief, and robber, nailed to the cross. That's why they died. Jesus died with every one of your sins nailed above his head. That's what grace is. That's what communion is. The picture is all the accusations nailing it to the cross 15 he disarmed the rulers and authorities put them to open shame by triumphing over them the abc's of salvation jesus did it all the question is will we accept that will we stop pretending oh, a lot of it a lot of it I contribute. Come on. My life, your life in Christ, totally depends on his righteousness, his goodness. And now we become faithful and get stronger and rooted and built up because we love him. Let us pray. Help us believe so simple a message and so profound a message that Christ Jesus the Lord is our righteousness and our forgiveness. As you pray, if it's true in your heart, not out loud, but would you just thank him before communion? If it's not sure, I beg you to take communion for the first time after making it sure. Put your heart and your faith in Jesus Christ. Receive him as Christ Jesus the Lord. And then celebrate. Thank you, Lord, for your son, our righteousness, all things to you, all things to us covered by Christ. Thank you for the wonderful, wonderful freedom to love you. 
And we pray in the name of Jesus, Christ Jesus, the Lord. Christ Jesus, the risen Lord of all creation. Christ Jesus, our coming King.